Good morning everyone! Uh, so today will be the first video in my study abroad series and I'm still in America obviously. I don't leave for Korea until August which is less than two months away but today I'll be talking about um, going to Dongguk and like the whole process like my study abroad process like the documents i needed how the process went how easy it was getting your passport all those sort of things that will prepare you because right now all i'm waiting for is like the documents from dongkuk so that i can get my visa and then after that you know then it's just waiting to leave so yeah i'll walk you guys through it and i'm in my bathroom because i was getting ready for today so yeah let's go well, first of all, the lighting in here is really good. Um, anyways, okay, so the first thing I'll be talking about is how I apply for study abroad. So my school has a separate study abroad webpage. So I went to that and mind you, I study, I applied for this like three days before everything closed because I didn't think I was going to study abroad this year. But my mom brought it up when I mentioned that a few of my friends would be studying abroad. And she's like, why don't you study abroad? And I was like, oh, I didn't realize, you know, in a pandemic that you guys would be cool with me doing that. But she's like, yeah, go ahead. And I did it and it was crazy. I got everything in in time. But anyways. Back, back to the original vlog. I school has a study abroad page. You go to that, you look for the program you want. I want to study in Seoul. And I ended up choosing Dongguk because their deadline gave me more time to get in all my documents. But also they were a better suited program for my major. I am an international business major and Dongguk had all those classes that I wanted to take. So yeah, I did all that stuff to apply for my school. I had to um, do a consent form, uh, I had to send in a purpose statement, a statement of purpose, why I wanted to graduate, why I wanted to go study abroad there. I had to send in my unofficial transcript because to study abroad, at least for my program, you had to have at least a 2.5 GPA and at the time my GPA was a 3.6, yeah my th GPA was a 3.66 so I had no problems with the GPA. Uh, after that. You have to also send in uh, your driver's license, your passport. Uh, I didn't have a passport yet, but my school's my school study uh, abroad department is so great, guys. Like they really work with you every step of the way and respond to you super fast, and they're just so resourceful and helpful. But yeah, they helped me. Like they just like pushed it back for me where I could send them my passport pictures. Like as soon as I got my passport, so I, I had to hurry up and get my passport. So everything with my school was super easy, super step by step. They walk you through everything. Now with the passport, I was like, oh no, I have to get my passport. And you like your passport can take ten to twelve weeks to get to you or four to six weeks if you do it expedited, which is a little more money, but I obviously needed my passport faster, so I did it expedited. Usually with your passport, you can go to like a USPS, your local post office, and get your passport picture taken. But because of the pandemic, it's a lot harder because you have to schedule appointments, and most of the appointments were gone until a very long time. So I had to go to CVS. CVS and Walgreens both offer passport photo services and it's super fast. It took like 15 minutes to get my pictures back. So I went there, got my passport pictures, and then I had to schedule an appointment to get my actual passport. So when you get your passport, you have to go through either a local court office or a passport office. You can even, I'm pretty sure you can get your passport at um, the post office as well. But like I said before, the post office was super booked. Even some of the passport service offices were super booked. But thankfully, I ended up finding um, a local court near me, like one city over super close, like five minutes away that had an opening so I could go and quickly go get my passport. My passport took only four weeks to get to me. Uh, I got sent out, I went to the office, did that process where you bring your photo ID, your birth certificate, your social security number, and your payment option, which is either going to be check or um, a money order. Those are the two different payment options they allow. I'm not sure who allows the card. I'm pretty sure some of them allow cards, but I don't know who mine didn't allow card. So I had to go and run and get a money order because the check I had was um, a bank check. It wasn't like an actual check. It was something, it was a starter check, should I say. And I didn't realize that because I've never had these checks before. So I ran across the street to get a money order and that was like chaotic. But story for another time, y'all. That's a story for another time. My whole experience with study abroad is just like me being nervous for everything and having to hurry up and change plans. But thankfully it always works out. 
the next process would be once your school so your school has to nominate you to the study abroad place like you wanted to the school you're going to in korea and my school nominated me for dongguk obviously uh i also got the scholarship from my school the international uh fee scholarship so yeah i have a scholarship from my school that i applied for and got but yeah they nominated me to dongguk in dongguk it's super easy like as long as you submit all your materials and there's no way you're not getting accepted into Dongguk. For Dongguk I had to enter my passport number, I had to upload a photocopy of my passport, upload a photocopy of my academic plan, and then upload a photocopy of my unofficial transcript. So it was really easy preparing for Dongguk and uploading all this stuff to their website because it was a really streamlined process. Everything was easy. They gave you the templates for most of everything, except for your unofficial transcript, of course. You have to get that from your school and upload it yourself. Um, but I was just able to go download mine, so it was really simple. But yeah, Dongguk was super easy to um, send them my information and apply to them. Uh, and for them, I still haven't heard back with my packet of st student information, but they're actually supposed to be sending that out this week. Um, so you guys probably see another video soon with me talking about what came in my student packet, which is what I have to take to get my visa. I need all the stuff they're sending to get my visa before I can even do my visa application and before I can get my plane ticket, which is why I haven't purchased that yet, because I need to know the information from Dongguk. Um, so yeah, a lot requires knowing information from your school, and with obviously being in a pandemic, some things may take a little longer, because, you know, they have to worry about quarantining for two weeks in Korea still, um, and all that other stuff. Now, I would say the hardest thing for me has been like preparing to leave because there's a lot of things I have to think about and get. I've been buying clothes for both the summertime and the wintertime because I have to, I still have to buy luggage, like suitcases to put my stuff into. And there's a lot of things I'm thinking about like when it comes to flying, like who has the best plane tickets because me and my sister are flying there together. So the whole study abroad process is super simple. It's just harder. It's actually harder just doing personal stuff, like looking for plane tickets, buying your luggage, buying your clothes and preparing what you're going to like take there. So that stuff is a little harder. I'll probably do a video when I start packing for Korea so you guys can see like what I bring and what I think is necessary. Because my sister's been there before, it's a little easier for me to know what to bring. So I'm not as like worried about that, but I am a little worried about packing because I love clothes. So it's going to be hard for me to like pick and choose which clothes, clothing pieces to bring. You want to be practical, but you also want to be fashionable or at least I want to be fashionable because that's like my thing, clothes. I love fashion. But yeah, the study abroad process has been super easy and super step by step. My school has been great at guiding me through it. Dongguk is really good at talking to you. They reach out and update you on any process. And you also get offered a scholarship when you go to exchange, as long as you haven't gotten a Korean scholarship before, which I also applied for. So I'll keep you guys updated on that process and what's going on with that as well. But yeah, study abroad is something super simple. Your passport will cost you, mine was like $145. Usually it's a little less than that. Um, but because I had to get my passport expedited, it's like an extra $20 tacked on. The student visa is only supposed to be $45, which is much cheaper than the passport, but it's also like easy. A visa is a little bit different from a passport. A passport, you can use to travel anywhere. The visa is specifically for that country, so I guess that's why visas are a little less expensive than passports. Um, my school had an application fee, a study abroad application fee, and that was $75. I guess that fee will vary by school. I just know my school fee was $75. Uh, Dongguk didn't have an application fee. It was all free once my school nominated me. And yeah, once they send you your student packet, then you know all your information. You know when you're supposed to leave and you know like what you need for your visa. So don't be afraid. If you guys have any fears about study abroad, don't be afraid. Just go for it. Make sure you talk to your family if you need to have a discussion with them. And yeah, just apply. Don't be afraid. It's a pandemic, but as long as you're safe and you're going to a country that's pretty safe, then there's really nothing to worry about. So if you guys have any questions about me and study abroad, some I'll 
be more than happy to do a Q&A video. So if you have any questions for me, just drop them down below in the comments. And yeah, I'll do a Q&A video later on to answer any questions you may have that didn't get answered in this video. And obviously you'll stay tuned for more videos because this is gonna be a long, fun journey. And I wanna bring you guys along with me as I prepare to leave to study abroad in Korea. It's gonna be so much fun and we're gonna learn so much and be able to explore together. And I'm grateful that you guys are on this journey with me. Thank you for watching today. I love you all. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and comment down below any questions you have or what you would like to see next. I'll see you later. Bye!